Um, resources according to Bloom's, that's just a reiteration slide of the point that I made earlier, which is make sure that when you're looking at software, what level are you on in Bloom's? And what level do you need to be or want to be? Because your goals will be the dictator of that. So, um, musictheory.net, everybody know that one? Yes. Great flashcards, great quick tutorials, great stuff like that, right? Perfect. Perfect for that low bloom taxonomy of remembering. Blogger.com, that's where people write about stuff. And so the idea of being able to write about something that you remember just on a very low level, sometimes bloggers are pretty, you know, not, not really deep stuff. Sometimes it's deep, but a lot of it isn't. So if you look out there, just, just kind of be aware of that. Applying uh, the voice thread, you can clearly see where that is an application of knowledge. Analyzing, coach's eye. Anybody know this one? This is great. I've got this one on my phone. And what it does is it will take a video. Let's say you're working with a fifth grader who's just learning Amish. You go up to them and you take your little video. And, and they're all messed up, right? They're the wrong angle or whatever it is. Coach's eye will play back that video and you can talk over the top of it. You can draw on it and say, you know, lift your chin or, you know, whatever it is you've got to do. And then you can send that off or you can just keep it as, a, as, a, as an assessment tool of how, how kids are doing. So Coach's eye is really cool. Highly recommend it. You do have to pay for that one. It's not free. Evaluate. Anybody know about Spotify? Do you all know about Spotify? Yeah, Spotify is streaming music, right? This was the destruction of the music industry on, on many levels. But Spotify is great because we no longer have to buy CDs. We can just go out to Spotify and look it up and you got five or six different <coughs> recordings of the same thing. Great for evaluating. You can compare and contrast. And finally, creating, I actually have a whole <coughs> of things for, for that. Um, Dippity is a timeline creator. Great for music history kinds of things. Uh, a website builder is Wix.com. Boy, that's being advertised all over right now. But it's really cool. It's free, very easy to use, and if you're if you're sort of HTML averse as I am, um, this works really really well. Notation. Uh, there's a new one called iCompose or Two for iPhone. I don't use it, but I thought I'd throw it up there. Muse Score. I've used a little bit, and Noteflight. I've used a lot. So those are the ones that I highly recommend. Um, there is a new web-based composition curriculum that I wanted to just give you a very quick um, screenshot of and introduce you to this because this is brand new. And I actually um, signed up for it. A teacher can sign up, I can't remember how much it is, something like 25 bucks. I mean, it's not terribly expensive, but you can have 250 students with that one subscription. And all of these lessons are already there. So what I'm finding, I've been pushing composition in schools for years. The biggest thing I hear, I don't know where to start. I have no idea how to teach composition. Nobody taught me how to compose in school. How many of you get a composition background when you're here? Very few, right? Maybe a little in theory, a little here and there. How many do it just because they like it? Yeah, there's more of that than there is actual curriculum, right? So this is a curriculum that I highly recommend for you to look at. Um, and you can review it without buying it. But I <coughs> Resources are getting better. They are indeed. Two resources that I want to make sure to share with you are uh, Technology Integration in the Elementary Music Classroom by Amy Burns. This is an awesome book. In fact, I've been hired by the West Fargo Schools uh, to do a workshop on this book for the elementary music teachers. They're going to study the book. What do you think I'm going to have them study? Not the technology, the lessons. What are the objectives? How, how is Amy working technology into the objectives? How is she assessing those music learnings? And then the next one is Teaching Music Through Composition, a Curriculum Using Technology by Barbara Friedman. And she's been teaching forever. 
probably 15 years and in the K-12 world has had thousands of students go through her music technology courses. And it was interesting, she sent her survey to me this week. I'm surveying all of my students because I want to know why there aren't as many girls in my classes. And I said, Barbara, that is so timely. So she is going to get her survey results to me before the, the presentation at the end of this month. Which I I am fast coming up on my last couple of minutes here. Let me, let me complete it by talking about choosing the right software. These are, these are basic, basic things that you might want to consider. What skills or concepts need to be taught and for what ages? What procedures or techniques are used to share the content? What does it look like? Um, is the quality of the interface a good one or not so good? What's the quality of the sound and the quality of the musical examples? And then another one is how do students interact with the program? Are the, is it gamified? Do they have levels? Is it sequenced appropriately? Um, how is feedback provided? Mastery learning in technology means that you step through a program and if you come up against something you don't understand, it sends you back. And you review and you do it again. Okay, you pass this time and onward you go. So mastery learning is something you want to look for. Um, what kinds of instructional settings could utilize the software? So you have to think about, okay, so here's this piece of software. How could I use it? What makes sense for me and my students? And then finally, what's the cost relative to the, to the amount of content? I think that's really, really important. And I've got a great little just for fun video to help us understand how important it is to choose the right thing. that gives them the background and the degree 
to move forward in their lives. So it's all very exciting. And that is part of our one to one one world outreach. Because if you have this capability, you can do so many more things. The world just opens up. And um, the QR code that I've given you here, if you have that, go ahead and, and click it. It is the article from which um, the conversation is, is coming on the idea of dropping this one-to-one -one idea. That's actually old. And I know it's what everybody's doing right now. But, but it, is, it is not old to do. It's simply old thinking that is something that is a concern to everybody, which is it becomes about the stuff. And we don't want one-to-one -to, -one to become about the stuff. We want the one-to-one -to, -one to open the world to the student for new kinds of learning. So think one the world. How can you do that? And just a couple of sidebars. Do you guys know tinyurl? If you've got this great big long string, you can go to tinyurl and we'll pop it in there and give you a short one. And then generators uh, are out there for free for these QR codes, and they're really hot right now. You, you can just put them on posters. You can put them everywhere. Get your word out really, really fast. Wordle.com is another one of my very favorites. And that will, I, I took the article and posted it into the text. And these are the words that came out foremost. So for example, one to one was the most important thing. But computing is not <coughs> learning. And I thought that was really interesting. I liked the way that one came out. On the other hand, there are some concerns, too. The technology becomes limited because the focus is on the device. So do be careful about you know, the, the spray and pray. Spray it on the technology and pray something cool will come out of it. Right? The new thousand dollar pencil. If you want one to one to really be important, you have to go beyond that. So the future's up to you. What music education looks like will be largely up to you. So many ways to approach it, but in the end it's still about the music, right? It's about the music. Traditions are important. They are. But your traditions may look different from mine, and that's okay. And we can have lots of them. Remember that your students are growing up in a world different from yours. You may not notice it right away. You'll feel older too. It's a sad state of affairs. <laughs> but I will finish with a, a look at the future according to Microsoft. Thank <laughs> you.